Hey guys, how's everybody doing this morning? So I've made some updates here to the um, Boros mid-range slash control kind of deck. Um, and I really appreciate your comments. I, I wanted to say that I definitely um, have taken them into consideration. So thank you for those. Uh, before we get started, if you are new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. And if you do like my content, please consider subscribing, maybe dropping a comment or a like, and possibly sharing it with a friend of yours who might also like my channel. For my returning viewers, thank you so much again for your support. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys. You guys are awesome. So getting back into the deck. So I kind of found out, especially after going 05, <laughs> that the deck was not working and needed some changes. Um, adding in Ur Urbrask's Forge is a great change if you're gonna be in Boros, just because this dodge is temporary lockdown and it's um, really hard to deal with for control decks. So. It's kind of a nice win con here. We have four Forge, four Wandering Emperor, and then one White Sun's Twilight to kind of um, act as our win conditions. Um, we also have four Restless Bivouac and four Mirex to kind of go along for our land as potential win conditions. So I ended up taking out the creatures because they just really were um, kind of just running right into opponent's removal. And I feel like something like Forge is just so much harder to deal with. So what I added in was two copies of Brotherhood's End into the main deck. So now we've got four temporary lockdowns, two Brotherhood's End. Uh, we do have uh, four Get Lost. And then I've got two copies of March of Otherworldly Light to help with, uh, you know, pesky artifacts, creatures, enchantments. This is good against Boros Convoke, especially. Um, one copy of Fateful Absence to kind of be like the fifth get lost to deal with Planeswalkers. It also deals with creatures. We've got two soul partitions, which you can use um, very sort of effectively in a lot of different ways. You can use this to either slow them down. You can use this to reset a temporary lockdown. You can use it to protect your Wandering Emperor, or protect your Forge. Uh, it just has a lot of utility. And then four copies of Sunset Revelry just to help us sort of survive to the mid game. Four copies of Lightning Helix to either go face or again survive to the mid game. And then we have, I think I've upped the land count here up to 26 land. So with 26 land, made room for two copies of Field of Ruin to fight opposing man lands. Um, because in control mirrors, you do find that pretty much whoever has the better man lands typically will win. You can just kind of get lots of value by sort of playing a game of chicken until someone does something, creating Murex tokens. So that's pretty powerful. Um, I think we have access to 21 sources of red and 22 sources of white, which feels pretty good. One copy of Takeja's Welcome here in the main deck just kind of helps us get a little bit of value. Uh, we can make Murex tokens on both our turn and opponent's turn, so that's really great there. It plays really well with Forge, um, Wandering Emperor, and uh, yeah, so just kind of a nice little value card. And then that's pretty much the deck. Sort of the plan is basically you just sort of mop up whatever they do. And then once you have a relatively clean board, you put out a forge and just wait for that to kill them. That's pretty much the deck. Um, we also, yeah, we have one copy of Sunfall, which also kind of gives us a potential threat there as well. So did get a little bit leaner on the threats and sort of more removal which really felt like is what kind of needed to happen. For the sideboard, I haven't really changed it much. I think I added in another Soul Guide Lantern and just basically it's just kind of helping with problem matches like bringing in four Knockout Blows against Mono Red, four Lithomatic Barrages against like Blue White Control um, or other decks that have like big white creatures um, or blue creatures, I suppose. Two copies of In the Festivities, just to kind of help slow down Convoke. And uh, two Soul Guide Lanterns and an Unlicensed Hearse to deal with like Graveyard Strategies in that combo deck. And then two Fateful Absence to kind of help deal with like Planeswalkers or like big green decks. So yeah, all that said, let's hop into some games. Um, after kind of really doing pretty abysmally uh, yesterday with the deck, I think it's now up to almost 50%, so it has been winning, which is really great. And it's going to take a while before we get above <laughs> a 50-50% rate since we did take a lot of losses. 
but you know, I really like where the deck is going, and I think it's an exciting journey, kind of um, shifting it around to kind of help meet what the metagame is throwing at us. So, yeah, hope you guys also enjoy it. Um, yeah, this hand looks fine. It's a little land light. We do have 26 sources, though, so I'm, so I'm not super worried, and we have a lot of um, interaction here, so I'm happy to keep. Also, um, if you are considering playing in the Arena Open, it is today, so I'm thinking of maybe doing, like, possibly one entry. I'm a little busy because I've got some stuff going on, but if you like Limited, definitely play in it. Just wanted to kind of call that out. Um, let's see, so they've got six in hand, so we're not going to get anything off with Revelry right now, which is unfortunate. So I think we just pass. Hope to hit some land. Okay. Um, we could kill it with Get Lost. We could get Revelry going, just try to buy some time. I think kind of with the map tokens, I think I just want to slow this down. So I think I'm just going to partition this. Okay, Field of Ruin is pretty nice because now we can go ahead and start getting uh, the right color sources, get another white. And then, yeah, let's just wait and see what they play. Maybe they play like a cottage or something like that. No cottages. I think we still want to get our Field of Ruin online. So let's just blow up, um, I guess, one of their wastes. Okay, and actually this is great. We can go ahead and get Forge going. Um, I suppose the turtle is kind of problematic. They do kind of keep getting value. So I think maybe, yeah, let's just helix it, I guess. We can helix it now. And then maybe set up forge a little bit later. Would like to hit some more land drops here. Okay, they've got turtle number two. Gix's command. Um, yeah, I think we just want to get rid of it again here. We can revelry first to get, let's see, how many cards they have in hand? I've got four cards. So I guess we can get some creatures going. So we can revelry and then get lost. Just going straight to virtue. Okay, well we can get rid of virtue on our turn also. I guess we can lose the Brotherhood's End. I guess it kills Glissa is the, the nice thing, but I think these lockdowns almost do as much. Maybe we lose lockdown, keep the Brotherhood's End in case we need it. Hmm. Yeah, because I guess like Brotherhood's End does do damage to Liliana also.
creature is pretty nasty. We don't have the red sources for Brotherhood's End, which is a little unfortunate. I think we just maybe get started on Forge. I think now we can get rid of lockdown. Doesn't really do much here. Triple draw was rough. Um, if we use Emperor, they can just kill it, which is unfortunate. We do want to get rid of this Preacher, though. So maybe we do it on their turn and then just use Forge to kind of chip away at Liliana. They don't block, we could also just get Emperor to kill Liliana right now, but then again we lose to Preacher. So I think maybe we just chip it down a little bit. You picked a fight with the wrong necromancer. Uh, now we probably want... Hmm. I guess it's worth trying to go for the red source for Brotherhood's End. But if we're, like, the Brotherhood's End is going to hit Emperor also. So it's a little awkward. So maybe we get rid of Brotherhood's End here. Drop it. If a cavern bat us, we're gonna have to respond with Emperor. Okay, so now I guess let's just make a Samurai here. Well, we finally hit our red source. <laughs> it's a little bit too late, though. Our forge is going to be a three power. We can try to pump up the samurai token, but then. We're going to lose again with uh, Emperor here, unfortunately. <sighs> yeah, I think... Hmm. Maybe it's just better to make another Samurai. Problem is then they can just kill it with Deep Cavern Bat. Yeah, so definitely in kind of a rough spot here.
Yeah, we need maybe like more sunfalls or more kind of big answers here, unfortunately. For this kind of deck. Alright, so we're taking... So let's block this 1-1 one, one here. I think we're taking like 7. Not quite big enough to push through Shieldred and they're just coming back for a lot. This is looking pretty close to over here. Yeah, and I think we've only got two blockers, so if we block both here, we're taking one, four, seven, ten, thirteen. Yeah, that's going to do it. I guess I'm a bit surprised, you know, even with 26 land, this deck is really just having trouble getting land out. So I don't know if that's, you know, maybe just like a sort of a random occurrence there, or if I need to like add more land into the deck to get going. Okay, so most of our sources do produce red. We can also potentially find red with Field of Ruin. So I think I'm gonna try to keep this here. Again, I'd like to start seeing three land opening hands, but yeah, maybe 26 land isn't enough. I think let's just go ahead and march the... Um, I suppose we could wait to see if they've got the Gleeful Demolition. Yeah, otherwise they just get the chance to do that, which is kind of annoying. So it's like whether do they have dem Demolition or not. Okay, they do have the Demolition, so we've got a nice play here with March. Okay, we do have Lockdown, but we could really use some more land. So we still kind of need to get something going. War Leader's Call, okay. Definitely need more land. <laughs> oh, this is brutal. Hold. 
Yeah, that is the potential downside of giving them artifacts, is then they can just demolition with those artifacts. Okay, need land <laughs> one time. <laughs> oh, could really use a white source. Might be a little too little, uh, too little, too late. So even if we hit, okay, and that's gonna do it. Not enough land. Maybe I have to like ship hands like that. This is kind of all new to me, so. Well, we have enough land. We have some stuff to do. <laughs> Cautiously optimistic. But I have been wrong before many times. Oh, I wonder if it's one of my viewers. That'd be cool. So I wonder if this is a helping hand deck or if it's just like straight mono blue. See, they've got six cards in hand, so we could get something out of um, Revelry here. Never mind. They've, yeah, actually, they've got. Yeah, we wouldn't gain anything right now. <laughs> Um, we could Helix to start hopefully drawing cards here. I think I'm just going to do that. So they've got Hottie Jin with counter backup, I would assume. I think we just set up for Emperor here. We'll do it again on their upkeep, perhaps. Cage's Welcome is actually kind of decent. The problem is we're facing down a lot of damage right now. We could use it with Murex, but we don't really have time to sort of mess around like that, I think. So we're gonna stop on their upkeep. Actually, never mind. Uh, we'll wait for them to do attack again. That's right. Haughty Jin number two. Oh, 
Body Gin is definitely pretty good because it doesn't die to temporary lockdown. Um, this will not be enough of an answer here. So you have like one turn to draw either like Sunfall or possibly Twilight. Yeah, that's fine. Maybe we don't have a turn. Yeah, and I guess that's gonna do it. Oof. Does not seem to be going well, that's for sure. I will admit very freely and openly that I am not a control player in any sense of the sense of the word. So <laughs> um, I'm sure that I'm definitely making some misplays or, or whatnot, but um, it's fun. You know, it, this is a fun deck and I'm enjoying it even if I'm getting my teeth kicked in here a little bit. <laughs> Oh, that bad, huh? Oof. It's sort of like a victory, but it's not really a victory. <laughs> Let's see if we can win an actual game. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'll take a Sunset Reverie. That looks fine. Blue-black fairies, maybe? Oh, uh, we could just Brotherhood's End here. That actually would be probably fine. Or we could Sunset Revelry, get a card. Won't gain any life. We'll get some creatures, I suppose. Yeah, this is probably fine. Brotherhood's End won't do anything to Kato just yet, so I think maybe we just try to Emperor this turn. They certainly could counter it, but I think that's okay. Could also just get in with Bivouac, start building it up. I think I like Emperor a little bit more, though. I'm kind of assuming this gets countered, but I think let's try for it. Now, what do we have here? 
So here I think we just attack Kato and then Brotherhood zoned. Clean up the board a little bit. Let's get another card here. A little bit of life. Um, we could just get lost that right now. That feels fine. And then we're getting into White Sun's range here. Go drain. Okay, so much for that. They probably take White Sun. Yeah. They might have the cut down here. Actually, cut down no longer works, right? It's out of range. Helix is nice. That actually allows us to beat, win the fight here. So, yeah, we'll activate. And then we can get in as a 5 5, they double block. And just Helix to 1 1. Do they fall for it? Nope, they don't. Let's make a token. Soul partition is interesting. They might have go for the throat here for the bivouac. Would be unfortunate. Can also just double activate, but I think I do want to get rid of this 
Gix, potentially. So having mana open feels good. And I think let's maybe diversify a little bit. Tawara, that's fine. Maybe we sold partition in response. Okay, so we can bivouac. Hmm. I guess do we just like suicide in? <sighs> this is kind of annoying. Um, we could also just attack with bivouac by itself. That might be the move. Otherwise, they just get a free kill, depending on how they block, because we only have one Lightning Helix. I think we risk it. We want to get that Shieldred gone. for it to get rid of the shieldred, I think. Maybe we should have just attacked with Bivouac by itself. Okay, so let's lock them down. Yeah, unfortunately we don't have enough to get Bivouac going because we need another white source. Which is unfortunate.
Okay, Bivouac can finally get in. However, they have Shore Up, which is annoying. They can use Shore Up to use uh, Gix to kill it. Ugh. Yeah, it's actually not going to work, unfortunately. They're down to 11 cards in, in library, and we have 40 cards. <laughs> they have milled themselves quite a bit, but the amount of card advantage they've gotten has been ridiculous. Guess we could try to actually like, just, just get rid of their library. It's not gonna... We're gonna need to draw well here too, but... Yeah, Gix's ultimate is pretty nasty. So they can cast Forge at instant speed? That's kind of ridiculous. Okay, that's going to do it, unfortunately. Oof. All right, let's take a look at the stats. All right, so currently at 41% win rate. Yeah, has not been going well. 12 wins, 17 losses. Unfortunately, you haven't seen any of the wins on the actual <laughs> recording here. But, uh, it, you know, it's been fun to play this deck. It's um, it's definitely not my, str my strong suit, not my forte in any sense of the imagination. But it's been fun. So thanks for watching, guys. We will see you next time.